This is Your Anxiety Toolkit, episode number 119. Welcome to Your Anxiety Toolkit. I'm your host, Kimberly Quinlan. This podcast is fueled by three main goals. The first goal is to provide you with some extra tools to help you manage your anxiety. Second goal, to inspire you. Anxiety doesn't get to decide how you live your life. And number three, and I leave the best for last, is to provide you with one big fat virtual hug. Because experiencing anxiety ain't easy. If that sounds good to you, let's go. Hey, before we get started with the show, I really just wanted to quickly let you guys know some exciting news. ERP School is back. Starting today, September 20th, 2019, it will be available for a very short window until October 1st. I am so excited to share this course with you again. I only offer it twice a year and it is all about exposure and response prevention. So this is the gold standard treatment for OCD. It is amazing treatment and effective treatment and science-based treatment. And the reason I created this course was because so many people like yourselves were reaching out to me saying, I don't have access to good therapists or I don't have access to a good kind of treatment like ERP and please help me. And so after lots and lots of work, I put together ERP school. It is an almost, well, actually it's an over five hour course. It's a video course. You can watch it in your PJs. It is $197, and once you buy it, you have a lifetime access to it. So even when I make updates, which I do every year, you will get the updates, you will get all of the information included. It has worksheets, it has videos, it has examples, example hierarchies. It's jam-packed full of the step-by-step treatment that I use with my clients in the treatment of OCD. So if you're a self-starter and you want to learn and you think you're ready to do the hard thing, go over to cbtschool.com and click on online courses or products. And it's right there. I will leave the link in the show notes of this episode. If you go to CBT School, you can click on the links there. Or if you go to social media during the next two weeks, I will be sharing the links all over the place and I can't wait to share it with you. And I hope that it helps you or someone you love because that's the whole point of why I made it. Have a wonderful day and enjoy the episode. Well, welcome back. So excited to have you here with me again. Holy moly, you guys. I'm so honored. Really, I am. Thank you for spending your time with me. It means so much. And you know what? After the conferences and Instagram and Facebook and meetups I've had here in Los Angeles, I feel like I actually know a lot of you now. Really, I do. It's come from this place of me feeling like I'm talking into oblivion to now being like, hey guys, what's up? I know your faces. (laughs) I'm so happy to see you. And so, you know, thank you. What an honor. What a gift just to know your faces and hopefully I'll get to meet more and more and more and more of you. OCD conferences, the BFRB conferences, different social media meetups, you know, hopefully I'll get to meet you all at some point. Thank you again so much for supporting me. Little message before we get started, please do leave a review. Your reviews mean so much to me. And I love an, a real honest review. I don't want you just to give a fluffy one because you think you should. What I'd love is your real honest review. The more reviews we get, the better the people we get on as interview guests. Because unfortunately, they don't just go off of the goodness of the podcast itself. They go off reviews. They go off the community and what the community is saying. So please do go and leave a review and you can do it on iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, Spotify, wherever you listen. I would really appreciate it. Okay. Before we get into the episode, I would like to share with you, drum roll please, 
the I did a hard thing segment. Okay, this one is killer. I love it. You ready for it? Here we go. Today is my daughter's first day of kindergarten. I feel like we need to enter in on applause right here. Last night, she said her tummy hurt and she didn't know if she could go to school today. But this morning, she woke up and she said, Mom, I am more excited than I am scared. And guess what? It's a beautiful day to do what, Mom? Hard things. Is that not the cutest thing you've ever, ever heard? Oh my gosh, I think a part of my heart just collapsed because I was so excited. It continues though. This follower has gone on to say, I am also about to start school today to get my master's in counseling psychology finally going for it. Thank you so much for so lovingly spreading such a wonderful message near and far. Holy smokes, it's a double I did a hard thing. This is so great. So, so great. Now I do hope that from these little segments we do, you get to see that your hard thing matters and it adds up. Seriously, by a small quote, it's a beautiful day to do hard things. A kindergartner went to school. Is that incredible? Somebody went to college. A few weeks ago, somebody baked a cake. Somebody was able to get through an MRI. This is incredible, guys. What an incredible movement and community we are part of. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, let's get into it. All right, let's take a breath because this one is going to be hard. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. I was reading something the other day. And these words jumped off the page into my brain and sunk in to a level that kind of shook me. Now, the words are a little harsh, so I want to kind of give you a little like heads up. Nothing bad, nothing. You can still leave the radio or leave this playing. It's not going to hurt your kids' ears. So (laughs) it's not that bad, but it's not usually language that I use here on the podcast, but this is it. It's three words. Watch your mouth. That's it. I feel like it's a mic drop. You mightn't get it yet, but let me share with you why that is the topic of today's podcast. We all need this one. We all have to watch our mouth a little bit more. And I'm not talking about the way in which you've probably heard that saying, which is, Don't say mean things to other people. Don't say crass things. Don't swear. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about being very intentional with the words you choose. Guys, I fall into this trap every single day. And when I read those words, like I said, they jumped out, smacked me in the face, turned me around in a couple of circles and sat me down in a chair. (laughs) Like that's what I felt like it did to me, right? It held my shoulders and said, watch your mouth. Because the reason I'm so kind of fired up but really passionate about these three words is often throughout the day, we use words that do not match what is actually happening. We say things like, oh my God, I'm freaking out. When maybe you're really anxious but you're not freaking out. That would, that would imply some kind of meltdown, right? Or they'll say, um, I'll die if I have to do that scary thing. No, you won't. Don't, don't use those words unless you actually will statistically and factually pass away. <laughs> scary words, I know. Don't say, I can't. If you technically can, it's just more that it's just a really, really hard thing to do, right? And please, when I say this, I'm not saying, you guys know my heart. I'm not saying that you have to do all the hard things and be all the great things. All I'm asking for you to do is check in and ask yourself, is the words that you use correct? Does it match 
the experience really, right? Rationally. The reason I pose this is because after doing some reading and really dropping into this a little more, I'm coming to really value the cognitive part of treatment, which I don't talk to you guys a lot about. We do know that the treatment of anxiety is usually heavily surrounding behavioral therapy, right? Even though I'm a cognitive behavioral therapist, we do a ton of behavioral work. But here I see the beauty of us looking at that cognitive work because it's such important work. Really be careful of the words you use. Now, I do a lot of this work with teens I see. Let me give you some examples. Like, you're not dumb, right? You can't use that word because that's not fitting for the definition of dumb. A better way might be for these clients to say, I'm struggling in math. English isn't my strong point. Another example somebody gave me the other day is, I'm unlucky. And I said, well, what does that mean? And they said, well, I never win anything. I'm just so unlucky. Bad things happen to me. And I'll say, but so what you said is you didn't win anything. And she's like, yeah, like in raffles and, you know, door prizes. I never win anything. I'm unlucky. Bad things happen to me. And I was like, but wait, so you're saying that because you don't win now bad things are happening to you? Let's check that out a little. Is that in fact true? (laughs) Right? If it's not, don't say it, right? This is the work. Don't say it. Now, I'll go a little deeper here. I am annoyingly prone. You ask my husband. Ask anybody who knows me well. I am annoyingly prone to saying how tired I am. I say it all the time. If someone asks me how I am, I'll often start with, I'm tired. But, and then I'll tell them all the good things. And even though it's true, (laughs) it is true, I'm tired. I work really hard. I have young children. I have two businesses. I'm a wife. I'm a, uh, I just, you know, you guys know me. I, I overdo it. And I'm, I'm learning to work on that. But I am always tired. But here's the thing where I have to watch my mouth is how helpful is it for me to keep repeating that? What benefit does it serve me? Maybe I might want to look at what are the consequences of that? Because when I do it, it does kind of make me feel depleted more. It does set off a vibe to where I'm telling this story as if I don't have control over it, right? Which I do. I could rest more. I could do a few select things to be tired less, right? And so by saying, I'm tired, I'm taking away at the accountability that I need to hold myself to, which is, you know, I could do better and it's okay. I'm not saying we have to always do better. I'm actually saying quite the opposite of that, right? I'm doing my best to really preach to you guys to like, let's do less, (laughs) less is more. Let's be B minus humans. Let's not be perfect. Let's accept our vulnerabilities and just drop down into our humanness, right? You can go back a couple of episodes to hear more about the common humanity that we have to accept. But what I'm really saying is let's say things that are helpful and true. Now, I used to be a really strong, I would say, learner. I love to learn about Buddhist philosophy I am delving back into it now that my kids are just a little older. I can come back to that now, and I'm so enjoying it. And there's this concept called right speech, right? And it's ultimately, it's not saying that there's right and wrong speech. It's basically saying only say things that are true and helpful. That's it. That's the rule. Only say things that are true and helpful. It's not helpful for me to say over and over and over that I'm tired. It's not helpful for us to say, we can't, I can't, it's too hard, right? And it's okay. Again, I'm not saying you have to be able to do all the hard things. It's no one can do all the hard things. 
you know, it's, it's a lot of you are out there doing incredibly, oh, incredibly difficult things and getting through it and holding your head up high. It's amazing. But because you're doing these amazing things, let's just say the things that are true and helpful, right? That's it. We've got to watch our mouths. There's freedom in this and there's compassion in this and there's growth in this oh, and there's connection in this, right? I, not long ago, set a rule for myself that I was going to try to train myself back into right speech and I was going to, for one whole month, say nothing bad about any human. I was going to really stay out of gossip really stay out of negativity and judgment and just drop down into, you know, this idea of right speech, right? Guys, it's hard. (laughs) It's hard. I have a couple of really great friends who caught me (laughs) mid-sentence and I had to step back and be like, wait a sec, whoa, 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 I got to watch my mouth. It's not kind. It's not helpful. It's not true, right? So again, let me loop back to the beginning here. This is ha- more harsh than I usually speak. I don't usually speak in this sort of motivating way. But I really want to stress to you the importance of this one. My guess is you're saying some stuff to yourself that isn't true and isn't helpful. Right? And we, we have to stop. You have to stop. You don't deserve it. You never deserved it. You never deserve to say those unkind things. And if somebody else said them to you, you still, you didn't deserve it, right? It's not, it's not what you need. It's not what you deserve. And you are a respected person. You deserve kindness, right? Okay. (sighs) Let's take a breath. Come together again. All right. Go out and try it. You can do a 30-day challenge if you want. You could maybe, you know, I say to my clients all the time, what would happen if we just reduced the stuff we say to ourselves negatively by 50%? I would do a dance if I heard you say you cut it by 50%. Oh my gosh, that's like game-changing right there. Drop it 10% even. Reduce it once and I'll do a dance. Just to know that you're treating yourself with this level of respect and honesty and non-judgment that you deserve and you always deserved. It's, you cannot negotiate that one with me. You deserve it. You've always deserved it. Okay? All right. Let's watch our mouths. If you don't like that, maybe some of you have had someone who said that to you and that when you hear that, it sounds quite abusive and offensive. That's fine. Just, this is the question, right? Is it true? Is it helpful? That's all we're talking about here. Okay. Sending my love out to you guys. So much dang love. Big virtual hug coming your way, right? Do you feel it? Squeeze. <laughs> it's a big squeeze. All right. Have a wonderful day. Sending you my love. And I'll see you next week. Actually, I won't see you next week. I'll chat with you next week. <laughs> Have a good one. Please note that this podcast or any other resources from cbtschool.com should not replace professional mental health care. If you feel you would benefit, please reach out to a provider in your area. Have a wonderful day and thank you for supporting cbtschool.com.